Hey friends, and welcome back to my top five in five. Quick lists for your tea break fix. In this series, I give you my top five lists in five minutes or under, just about the time it takes to make a great British cup of tea. And in this episode, top five iconic ES-335 guitars. Kicking off our list at number five is a guitar belonging to a sadly missed talent, Mr. Chris Cornell of Soundgarden, Audio Slave, and Temple of the Dog. His green 335 is now almost as iconic as the man himself. Gibson released a limited edition run of this guitar at the NAMM 2019 show on the 16th of January at the Forum in LA. It features Lollatron honbuckers, clear no number top hat knobs, and signature mother of pearl peg head inlay. The release was limited to just 250, making this one of the rarest ES-335 production runs, and certainly heading it firmly towards being a collector item. The great thing is that all profits from the launch went to benefit the Chris and Vicky Cornell Foundation and the Epidermolosis Bullosa Medical Research Foundation. Dave Grohl is going to get me a lot of stick for putting his blue ES-335 custom shop design on this list because I know the purists will say it's not a 335. However, both Gibson and Grohl beg to differ as it's been billed as such in all media they've released. Nobody can argue, however, that it's fast become a modern icon in the hands of the Foo Fighters frontman and it's graced most of the stadiums and arenas in the live circuit over the past five years. It's certainly the most distinctive 335 on my list with its Firebird headstock and diamond-shaped F-holes. The guitar, complete with its mini Grover tuners, and classic burst bucker two and three pickups will set you back a cool three and a half thousand dollars. At number three, what list of 335s would be complete without the architect of rock guitar? It is, of course, Chuck Berry's Red ES-335. This is the iconic guitar to rock out tunes like Johnny Be Good, Maybelline, and it was the sixth string that Chuck played right up to his death, aged 90, on March the 18th, 2017. So fond was he of this particular guitar, it was specified in his will that it should be buried with him, and in accordance with his instructions, it was fitted right into the lid of the coffin. A nice touch, Chuck. Rest in peace, you legend. Eric Clapton has more regularly been associated with his Strat and SG guitars, such as the Fall, and this is one of the reasons why he misses out on my top spot. He played his 1964 Cherry Red Gibson ES-335 heavily in his early career in the Yardbirds. I have to include it now, however, as it was the first that came to mind when I was thinking of my list. It became known as the Cream Guitar, because one of his roadies painted the word in large letters on the case. After using it throughout his career, the guitar was eventually sold at auction in 2004, when Guitar Center paid a staggering 847 and a half thousand dollars for it. On August 1st, 2005, Gibson Custom, in conjunction with Eric Clapton and the Guitar Center, released a worldwide limited edition of 250 replica guitars. The Eric Clapton Crossroads ES-335 is a detailed reproduction of the cherry red ES-335 once owned by Eric. It was issued with a replica of the famous Cream Guitar Case, a label signed by Eric Clapton inside the body, and a certificate of authenticity. A portion of the proceeds from each sale went to the Crossroads Center at Antigua. Honourable mentions must go to Gary Moore, Paul Weller, Alvin Lee, Noel Gallagher, Joan Jett, Eric Johnson and Warren Haynes, although I'm sure you can probably name another 50 more famous ES-335 guitars out there. I look forward as always to hearing your suggestions and what I've missed. The top spot can only go to Lucille. In the winter of 1949, King played at a dance hall in Twist, Arkansas. The hall was heated by a barrel half filled with burning kerosene set in the middle of the dance floor, a fairly common practice at the time. During a performance, two men began to fight, knocking over the barrel and sending the burning fuel all across the floor. The hall burst into flames and was evacuated. Once outside, however, King realized that he'd left his guitar inside, so he went back into the burning building to retrieve his beloved $30 Gibson guitar. King learned the next day that the two men started the fire had been fighting over a woman who worked at the hall named Lucille. King did not know Lucille but named that guitar and every guitar he subsequently owned Lucille. As a reminder, never again to do something as stupid as run into a burning building or fight over a woman. B.B. King wrote a song called Lucille in which he talks about his guitar and how it got his name. The song was first released on the album Lucille and is included on the B.B. King Anthology 1962 to 1998 album. So there is my list. Did I include your favourite ES-335 guitars? If not, please be sure to let me know in the comments section below as I love to read your additions. It's great when you expose me to new players and their guitars that I'd not previously been aware of. Or like the Eric Clapton Fall SG that I missed off my list of iconic SGs. I love to be reminded that I'm only mortal like everyone else. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you haven't already, it can't hurt subscribe and click that bell icon to be informed when my next top five list is released. That will be really soon. But in the meantime, folks, as always, take good care.